Turn me down there with Mac. Uh, um, Gale at centre half four, but the best player on the ground I gave to Chris Nash, who played on the wing. He was very, uh, it was a good player last week against Collingwood and added a bit of bite on that uh, centre line. Wayne Carey, it was a bit of deja vu uh, for him. There's a, lo a lot of similarities between yesterday's game and the state game, and was a very influential player in the uh, dying moments. And I gave one to Alex Ashenko, I think has added a bit of presence and stability to the ruck division. But as I said, they got away to a flying start, but uh, North as it so often happens, were able to ram on eight quick goals in that second term to uh, to take full control. And when they added three... With the wind, or...? Well, the wind was going down that bottom end of the screen, as you see now. now. That's where most of the scoring was uh, done during the game. And uh, that second term, eight goals and 11 for the first half, was without any input from the full forward in uh, John Longmire. But he came good and kicked those three goals in the early part of the third term. And they looked to have a stranglehold on it. But uh, thanks to Nace Lambert, the smaller players, Waitman, and Turner, late in that uh, third quarter, added three goals, gave uh, Richmond a little bit of a sniff, even though well behind, but they certainly finished on very well. And uh, unfortunately, it was, as I said, Carey again kicked three goals, three of the four, and had a hand, which is this one here, took a mark, he'll handball off, and an easy goal to North. And unfortunately for the Tigers, they let himself down with easy goals like that when the game had to be won. Jeff Hogg versus Michael Martin. How was that, Jules? Well, full points to Hogg in the first quarter. Kicked three goals of his four for the day. But then I thought Michael Martin uh, battled very hard and took control. And to all the Richmond supporters or North Melbourne supporters, that free kick definitely was there. And unfortunately, uh, Hoggy just was un unable to convert as German was earlier in the term. If you read between the lines, it could be. Well, he kicked five goals. Gastev played quite a good game on Dacos, but uh, still Peter Dacos was able to sneak away and kick a few goals. You saw Gavin Brown there, uh, about 80% fit, if, if uh, that's an exaggeration. He really struggled. He had about uh, half a dozen or eight kicks, and it was uh, a crime to watch a player of his talents struggle in a match like uh, like it was last night. Robert Walls was quite critical of Mark Zanotti in the finish. He took a mark or got a free kick about 15 or 20, minute, 20 metres out and the struggle that his fellow players made to get the ball to him and then it was just an absolutely shocking kick and he thought that, uh, this is Robert Walls thought, that they were perhaps a three goal inferior side to Collingwood in the finish and not the six goals, three or 39 points that it showed on the scoreboard. Now Robert, uh, yep, uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned Alex Oshenko's chains attitude down here in Melbourne with North Melbourne. Now the coach has had a go at the attitude of his players in that he says none of them, I suppose that means hardly any of them, do extra training on the nights off. This is uh, the Brisbane Bears, Barras? Yes. Well, uh, I, I believe, after having uh, quite a good chat to two or three of the people around the Brisbane Bears last night, that uh, they are a very, very enthusiastic bunch. And I think Robert Walls is on the right track. Uh, it's very difficult. I'm sure you can understand when you go to move to uh, a Surface Paradise... At Mitsubishi Motors. Yes, leading off, we have St Kilda's David Grant, who has unquestionable courage in under heavy traffic there. A tremendous mark. The next mark, little Libba. Look, two bites. It shows his usual determination. The next hawk, big Lawrence Bingham here. Nice mark. Two grabs completes a pretty handy mark. A promising young player for Footscray is Rowan Smith. Have a look at that. Back with the flight. That takes a lot of courage. Great mark. Yes, and... Um, Gow is often has these types of marks for one and two. I'm not sure if he controlled it long enough. Darren Crocker from the back kept his eyes on it and was awarded the mark. And best on ground yesterday has a perfect sit, Chris Nace in classic style. Yeah, Jimmy Steins, he was on crutches during the week. Have a look at this for a mark. And he is in back in tip-top form. Terrific mark at the centre of the pack. The yes, and last night over here over at uh, Carrara. We have Steve McGluckley and uh, just shows the importance of front position, particularly for a smaller player. And unusual to see Mark Zanotti down the forward line. Have a look at this as he flies from the back. Pity his kicking wasn't as good as his mark. He looked very happy about that, but Kel and I both decided that the winner was David Grant. And when we have a look at it again in replay, you will see the courage of David Grant under extreme pressure. Two Footscray players yeah. from, look at that, in front and still held on to a terrific mark. Good on you, David. You join uh, some of the other round-by-round -round winners, including Wangan. We see uh, Fitzroy and the Swans and Jamie Lawson bringing a regulation goal back. Quite a nice kick and puts it through for quite a good goal. And here's uh, Minton Connell. Uh, there's very little space here. 
almost got the ball stuck between the posts. Oh, oh, what a clever story, Ron. And here's Brian Royal, who actually is developed into a marvellous goal sneak. And he's got around, made himself balanced, and put through a very nice goal. And here's Brian Royal again. A suggestion of a blind turn here. Just a suggestion. And a beautiful sneak goal by a Ford Pocket Specialist. And that's what Brian Royal has become. And I don't know if I'm really qualified to speak on this one because I don't regard these as great goals. But I must say, if it was a round ball, it would have been a great goal. Palais would have been proud. <laughs> and uh, we what? go for Minton Connell because it was really a very nice goal. And as you said, Ron, it could have got jammed between the posts. The angle was so... Acute. Acute. It's, oh. a, it's a Jack Dyer line, isn't it? It is. Very good. Good on you, Minton Connor. Well done uh, to you, Lark Mover, yesterday with 48. Well, the Tony Hall goal wasn't eligible. This, oh. Ken Hinckley and Tony Hall, they had a terrific duel, didn't they, on, uh, on Tuesday night? And, and, and well, Peter McKenna, I should ask, because he, he kicked more goals than anyone else at the table. None Peter, is this one of the great goals you've seen? Well, it was fantastic. Man on man, he just hipped Hinckley out of the way. Now, he, that was a check side kick or a boomerang kick, and he did have a look, and he's a South Australian, and they have perfected that kick. Top goal by Tony.